2018 has been a great year for PlayStation 4, and we want to talk about the cream of the crop. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the best PS4 games of 2018. Number 15 is Hitman 2, which did exactly what I wanted it to do. I really enjoyed the episodic Hitman game, and when I found out they were A, releasing that as a full game, and B, making Hitman 2, I was really excited, because I knew that meant it worked out. The reason it made me happy was the episodes were all very, very high quality, and Hitman 2 continued continued that tradition in spades, except it expanded. The levels are bigger, they're more choice oriented, there's sillier elements to it. Hitman 2 is basically, in my opinion, the best Hitman game, and it's awesome that we got it. Number 14 is the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Now, if you remember Spyro, the game is magic. It's really, really a fun game. But the Spyro Reignited Trilogy didn't just give us an updated version of it, because it had this big problem that I'd like to refer to as the camera. Spyro Reignited Trilogy lets you revisit three phenomenal games with a modern camera system, and it is just a delight. The animation, the voice acting, the colors, the textures, it's all revamped on a level that I would say is comparable, if not definitely on par, with the Crash Bandicoot remasters. I was incredibly happy to play Spyro again, and it seems like they were incredibly passionate about bringing, frankly, some of the best collectathon games up to a modern standard. I know that it's kind of not a great genre, but Spyro did it with personality and fun, and frankly, I think that they're among the better of that genre. Number 13 is Valkyria Chronicles 4, really just a phenomenal strategy RPG that takes a lot of different elements, combines them into one streamlined thing that plays out like a graphic novel. It's not a new formula, the previous Valkyria Chronicles take this formula, but they had previously made Valkyria Revolution, which altered that formula way Way too much and didn't do a good job of it. Valkyria Chronicles 4 is a return to form, it brings us a great story, it's a lot of fun, the levels are, in my opinion, some of the better levels, and I love the characters. Number 12 is Tetris Effect, and when we're talking about this game, we have to say a couple of things. It's Tetris. Like, it's not that different. There's a couple of new rule changes, like you can charge a meter to slow things down, but that's not really a big addition, it's Tetris. But it's Tetris that manages to be amazing, visually, auditorily, and I don't know how, but it becomes an immersive experience. Frankly, it's beyond fun, it's Tetris again, that's really all I need to say about the gameplay. But it works so hard at being more than Tetris visually, by giving you lots of different stimuli to process, it's a different experience. Number 11 is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which, as I've said elsewhere, really benefits from Assassin's Creed Origins groundwork. Now, Assassin's Creed Odyssey isn't necessarily as good as Origins, but it does build on it in a few very good ways. In my opinion, the reason this is one of the best games of the year is because it takes the Origins formula and gives us a bigger, more amazing world to do things in. Does that mean all the characters are as good? Maybe not, but most of them are pretty close. Origins is a hell of an act to follow, and frankly, I don't think it deserves a lot of criticism for being not quite as good as probably the best Assassin's Creed game, considering that the yearly release schedule in years past has resulted in some terrible games. Odyssey deserves a lot of credit, although it was developed alongside Origins, so it's not just a turnover churnout. It is a gorgeous game and a lot of fun, and it's Assassin's Creed in its Origins form, which is frankly probably its best form. Number 10 is Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition, which is frankly one of the best isometric RPGs ever played. It is a strategy, sort of traditional, top-down CRPG style game. It is, however, so much more. It really just starts there and builds out into this amazing array of ideas that are all executed amazingly. Frankly, this is a game I didn't really expect to see on console. And I think the thing that's probably most shocking about it is just how well the controller works. Like, they've mapped out the controls so well. It's 
genuinely just a thing that impresses me to the point where it's like, okay, well, all of these games should be on console at this point. We know how to do it. Number nine is Monster Hunter World, which brings in all of the amazing Monster Hunter stuff. The hunting of monsters, of course. Probably the most obvious thing I could have said, but it needed to be said. You traverse a world, tracking them down and fighting these sometimes incredibly large and interesting monsters, but now you do it in a fully open world as opposed to one separated into zones. Some Western conventions have been adopted in strategic places and they do not mess up the formula. This is in every way a Monster Hunter game. It's beautiful too, because it's the first main console one, and it's worth a large amount of your time. Number eight is Black Ops 4, which does deserve criticism for not having a single player campaign. However, the time spent on the multiplayer mode is appreciated. It's really good multiplayer. It has its problems, again, basically centered around money. But the actual gameplay of Black Ops 4 is incredibly smooth and fun, genuinely fun. Does that mean it's perfect? No, but for what it is, it probably is the best Call of Duty game, honestly. I enjoy the hell out of it, I just wish there were some different things about it. But that doesn't mean I'm going to dock its gameplay. And I think neither should you. If you're a fan of Call of Duty, I think this is a game you should at least give a go because it really does a good job. Now, a bit of a buyer beware, again it has no single player campaign campaign, but you know, fun is fun. Number seven is Nino Kuni 2, which in a lot of ways is very similar to Nino Kuni 1, and in some ways it's more of a loot-oriented RPG, and frankly, the combat itself is a little more hack and slash and a lot more fun in my opinion. Now, there are things about this game that if you expect the exact same game from the first, you're probably going to be disappointed, but I hope that's not what you expect. A lot of games in Japanese RPG series change up some pretty serious things between titles and I'm glad that Nino Kuni isn't going to just be a stale series that never changes. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I think it's charming, perhaps more charming than the first, which is a difficult, difficult prospect, and it sucked me in for quite a while. Number six is Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age, which is perhaps the most traditional JRPG of the year, while simultaneously being the most worthwhile to play without a nostalgia factor. Honestly, it wasn't nostalgia that kept me coming back to this game. It was the fact that it was a beautifully rendered world with a great engaging story with a lot going on in it. I mean, it's pretty much a traditional JRPG. There's a few quirks, a few twists, but nothing that deviates too far from the formula. It's just a really competent and beautiful iteration of that formula. Number five is Detroit Become Human, a narrative game that gives you a lot of branching possibilities. Now, Quantic Dream has been responsible for some games that frankly people love and people also love to argue about, but this one really gives us a lot. You can pretty much kill anybody and keep going. You can change decisions, you can change paths, you can really do a lot. Now, I'm not saying it's perfect. It certainly has its parts where somebody says something like it would never be said, and it is really just a narrative-oriented game, so that's the center of it, and it does a really good job. It's an interesting story, albeit sometimes a little clumsy. That said, it did make me feel things and I felt good progressing through it. Number four is Shadow of Colossus. This is certainly an old game to remake, but it has been made into one of the most beautiful things. And Shadow of the Colossus is just such an interesting, quiet, lonely experience. It's kind of a zen game without being needlessly pretentious. It's an artistic game. Again though, without the pretense. As an adventure game, it's definitely a more of an experience and the puzzles and bosses and everything is kind of seamless in a way I wouldn't have expected even years ago. It just holds up in my opinion. It's a great game. Number three is Red Dead Redemption 2, which is just phenomenal. I mean, there's stuff that I think might be a little bit tedious, a little bit too tedious to be considered a game, but the game itself, it's amazing. It's detailed, it's action-packed, and yet when it's a story, it's a deep, interesting narrative. It gives you the freedom to do so much, to cause havoc in ways that probably weren't possible at that time, but who cares? Also horse poop, that's funny. Number two is Spider-Man, which is really amazing. Just a great game. Are there 
some of the open world trappings that nobody likes. Yeah, sure. But it does them in a tasteful way for the most part. And the web slinging. Oh, the web slinging. And the fact you can just basically do whatever you want as Spider-Man. It's what I mean, what else do you need to hear? It's a fully realized well done Spider-Man game that captures the feeling of being Spider-Man very well. It's phenomenal. Number one is God of War, which is a total reboot to the series in addition to being a sequel that really does a lot with the concept. A, it's pretty. B, it never cuts. The camera is a continuous thing. C, it's a narrative. D, it's a narrative about a parent and a kid and their journey and loss. God of War is a different animal, but at the same time, it's familiar. It feels like the logical thing to do to continue the series in 2018. And God, it's good. It's just so worth the time. Couple of bonus games for you. Celeste, the side-scrolling platformer, really great level design, really great gameplay, and one of my favorites of the year for sure. Kingdom Come Deliverance, which, do not get me wrong, has its problem. This is a game that, well, launched pretty buggy. It's got a lot of arguments about it across the internet, but there is one thing it deserves some praise for, and that is its combat system. It is one of the most ambitious combat systems in a game, period. And it takes a lot of learning and nuance to get a hold on exactly what you're doing, but once you do, it is very satisfying. Finally, we have Dead Cells. Dead Cells is an absolutely beautiful roguelike pseudo metroidvania that changes every time you die but it doesn't feel like it changes every time you die it feels like a handmade game it's fun it plays with the conventions it brings lots of new ideas in and i love it what was your favorite ps4 game this year leave us a comment let us know and if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week the best way to see them first is of course a subscription click subscribe and do not forget to click the notification bell as always so thank you very much for watching this video on Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.